The Magic Paintbrush, Chapter 20. The basement was more cavern than basement. Damp stone crowded Amy on both sides. A solitary light beckoned in the distance, somewhere past the end of the stairs. She felt her way carefully, straining to see through the gloom. What was this? And what awaited her at the bottom? She was halfway down when she stumbled. Her backpack scuffed the wall, and her foot landed on Luna's paw. He squawked. Perhaps if you had more lights down here, we could all see what we're doing. Amy was so panicked that it took her a second to recognize the voice. And when she did, the wave of relief that followed almost bowled her over. Lao Lao? she said hoarsely. For a moment, silence. Then, Amy? Amy's step quickened. Yes, it's me. Shh, Lao Lao said. Don't shout. Stay very quiet. The tatua is sleeping. Amy saw what Lao Lao meant as soon as she and Luna reached the bottom of the stairs. The monster. The swell of its body nearly reached the cavern ceiling. Its wings lay folded, its eyes closed. Now that she listened for it, Amy heard the monster's rasping breaths. Amy, Lala said hushed, over here. Amy edged around the beast, pressing Luna behind her. An electric lantern cast shadows on the cavern walls, which were lined with rusting cages. Amy wasn't sure what she'd expected to find at the end of her search, but this was definitely weirder. What on earth had she gotten herself into? Worse, what had she gotten Lao Lao into? Her grandmother stood trapped in the nearest cage, her clothes wrinkled, her perm wilted. Too late, Amy tried to block Luna from view, and everything Lao Lao had been through. Maybe another shock wasn't the best idea. Oh! Lao Lao said as she saw him. Her eyes widened, her fingers tightened around the metal bars. She stared at his tiger pelt, blinked at his feathers, and then, <clears throat> to Amy's astonishment, her grandma smiled. You did find the brush, Lao Lao whispered. Amy had so many things to say, so many questions to ask. She didn't know where to start. You know about the brush? Behind them, the Tautai snor snorted. Everything in Amy stilled. Her hands, her lungs, the blood in her veins. I'm going to die, she thought. I'm going to get eaten by a monster in China. And my parents won't even know until the end of the week, because they don't have Wi-Fi. I'm going to die, and my last thought is going to be about Wi-Fi. The Tautai's eyelids twitched. Its jaw worked, grinding enormous teeth against enormous teeth. When it snorted again, and the snort melted into a snore. Phew, Luna mouthed. Yes, Lao Lao said. Of course, I know. This wasn't how I wanted to introduce you to the magic paintbrush, Amy, but it's always had a mind of its own. Amy was too busy choking down her surprise to reply. And it looks like you didn't need an introduction. Lao Lao tilted her head toward Luna, who waved at her. You're a natural. Now get me free from this cage. Amy shook her head. I'm not a natural. My paintings don't always work right. They don't usually work right. She tried to tell Lao Lao about her many failures, but the old woman just said firmly, I'm sure you can do it. You're a better artist than me. You do it. Darling, that brush hasn't obeyed my hands in a long time. Everything Lao Lao said filled Amy with more questions. And now wasn't the time for interrogation. They needed to get out of here before the Tatai finished napping. Fine, Amy took a ragged breath. I'll try, but don't be mad when I paint a skeleton key and it ends up exploding or something. Lao Lao's eyes gentled. Amy, why curse yourself before you've even started? The paintbrush draws in your imagination. It feeds on the fantastical. And how can you dream when you're terrified? Letting go of terror wasn't like letting go of a rock. It was like scraping herself free from mud. Still, Amy tried. She closed her eyes and ignored the Tautai's mucousy breaths, ignored the gloomy cavern with its suffocating walls. 
ignored her own harsh voices, waiting to pounce. What could burn through metal bars? What could free Lao Lao? An idea unfurled, tender as a pea shoot. She snorted. Don't be ridiculous, Amy. Just as quickly, she wrestled the voice silent. She let her idea bloom until it filled her mind, messy, gorgeous. Then she took her vision and spilled it onto paper. Lao Lao chuckled when she recognized it. By then, Amy was nearly done. She filled in his eyes last, dabbing in the red irises, giving each a flick of white. Then she leaned back and watched the Hao Dao emerge from her sketchbook. She didn't he didn't bound free like Luna. He didn't slide out like the Skylands, or tumble like most of her failed paintings. The Hodo's nose came first, twitching in the air. Next came his wide, slobbering jaws. But instead of spit, they leaked magma. His paws were twice the size of Luna's, with great, thick pads and yellowed claws, he landed on the cavern floor in a low crouch. More magma dripped onto the stone, radiating heat so powerful Amy felt like she was staring into a furnace. He wasn't a perfect replica of La Lao's hoodoo, but Amy hadn't meant him to be. This hoodoo was her own. Beautiful, La Lao said. The dog studied Amy with shining, intelligent eyes. Please, she said. Can you free my grandma? The hoodoo's innate glow for out, far outshone the dinky electric lantern, and Lao Lao had to squint as he padded to the metal bars. With one lap of his burning tongue, he melted through a wide swath of them. The remainder liquefied like chocolate in his jowls. Lao Lao was nearly free when the basement door slammed open. A man stood in the threshold. The young man from the hallway. Light streamed in from behind him, silhouetting his face. He climbed down two steps before he noticed them. Before he shouted in alarm, Lao Lao scrambled from her, shell, her cell. The Tao Tai opened one gleaming eye. 